I have a vision. And in this vision, I see you reaching deep inside of yourself and really discovering how amazing you are and living the life of your dreams. And I've always had this little voice in my head telling me that I needed to help people and make a difference in this world. And I had that little voice even as a little boy. And you would have noticed me when I was a little kid. I was different. I'm sure many of you know what it's like to be different. Different color, a different size, a different shape, a different belief. Standing out and people noticing. And like that, I was the fat kid. And people teased me. They made fun of me. I was bullied. I was called names like fatso and lard ass, tubby, fat ass. And it wasn't just by kids. It was by adults, too. And the sensitive little boy began to withdraw from the world. I spent a lot of my time watching really bad sitcoms in the 60s and the 70s and eating. And the more I was teased, the more I withdrew, the more I ate, the bigger I got. And the cycle continued. And I can remember certain times in my life. Like I remember being in grade school, in gym class. You remember the president's program on physical fitness? Do we still have that? And I remember every year it was the same thing. It'd be a week long and it'd be things like push-ups, sit-ups, pull-ups. There were a lot of ups and none of them I did very well. But the day I hated the most is on one of the days they weighed us in. And every year, it was the same thing. On the day they'd weigh us in, I had this gym teacher who thought it was really brilliant to weigh us from the lightest to the heaviest kid. So every year it was the same thing. And the day we weighed in, it'd be the end of the gym class, and all the kids would be over here, already weighed in, and I'd be standing here on the other side of the gym, by myself, waiting for that call, and somewhere in the back of my mind, wishing that some other kid who was bigger and fatter than me had moved into my neighborhood and took that title away of being the fattest kid in the neighborhood. And the same thing would happen every year. All the kids would be way over there. I'd be on this side of the gym, and the call would come out. OK, Schmarin and everybody else. And there'd be a roar of cheering, like it was some great honor to be the heaviest kid in the class. And I would go up there with this big, fake grin on my face, and inside I was dying. And that little voice inside of me, it started to fade. And I remember other times. I remember getting older, and I don't know how many times I had lost weight and gained weight, but I still felt horrible inside. And I remember, as a young adult, being invited to a New Year's Eve party, and I was so excited. Somebody actually invited me to a party. And I went to this party. There was probably 50, 60 people there. And I remember making myself a plate of food and my Diet Coke. And I remember finding a place to sit. And I remember sitting on this beautiful wooden rocking chair. And just like a scene out of a movie, the chair broke. I crushed it. And it was funny. It had to be funny. You saw this short, fat little guy laying on the floor with a plate full of food everywhere. And in that moment, the entire room froze. There was not a sound. Everybody turned around. They looked. And then they laughed. How could they not laugh? It was a funny scene. The only person it wasn't funny to was me. I was dying inside. And that little voice in my head telling me to help people make a difference in this world, I lost it. I couldn't find that voice anymore. And I remember getting out of that New Year's Eve party as fast as I could, and I went home. Being alone, and I remember spending my New Year's Eve with my two best friends at that time. A large sausage pizza from a place called Nick's and a frozen cheesecake with the cherries on top of it. And man, I ate it all. I ate all of it. And I was full, and I was stuffed, and I was angry, and I was sad. I hated myself. I hated the world. I hated everything. So many times, so many things. Imagine 
what it's like to go out into public and little kids are pointing their finger at you like you're a freak or a monster. And at some point, the pain got too bad. I couldn't stand it anymore. I hated everything. I hated the world. I hated myself. Nothing made me happy. And I gave up. I quit. I had no desire to live anymore. So what did I do? I remember contemplating this for a long time. And I took a bottle of sleeping pills, I took a bottle of painkillers, and I remember pouring them into a paper cup. And I remember walking into the bathroom and placing that paper cup on my bathroom counter. I looked at it for a long time, thinking about this could be the end to all of my pain. It also scared me. And then I remember looking at myself squarely in the mirror, and I saw nothing. I saw nothing. So what did I do? I took all the pills. I took them all. I took enough medication probably to kill an elephant. And I remember sitting down in this chair. I had this chair I sat in that I used to hide from the world. I would watch TV in that chair. I would eat in that chair. I would avoid the world in that chair. And I remember sitting in that chair and my heart beating about 100 miles an hour. I was scared. Yet there, in the back of my mind, there was kind of a sense of relief. In case you haven't noticed, I'm not a giant. I'm five foot six. At my peak, I weighed 360 pounds. I had a 56 inch waist. This is what I used to look like. And I remember sitting in that chair, scared, alone, and at some point I passed out. I don't remember much after that, except I woke up in that chair. For some divine reason, I didn't die. And I remember in the morning, I opened my eyes, and the light was shining in through my living room window. I can't even describe to you in words what that feeling was like but it was one of the most moving, surreal, life-changing moments. It was such a sense of peace inside of me. I truthfully, I thought I was dead. And then I opened my eyes, and I realized that I was still alive. I was still alive. And in that moment, I found clarity and purpose and direction in my life. I realized that I must be here for a reason. And I remember the tears starting to flow down. I was angry for, at myself for what I had done, but I, I, sent, I felt this sense of relief. I began to feel my courage, and I began to find direction. And I made a decision to get out of that chair. And in that moment, my life changed. I started a new course in my life. I wanted to experience what everybody else experienced. I wanted to enjoy things. How about just be going, able to go to an amusement park and get on a roller coaster and the safety equipment that they need to strap you in fits you? Or on an airplane, the seatbelt. I wanted you to experience life. I had missed so much. And I got out of that chair and I made a decision that I would never sit in that chair again. Never. So I wanted to start studying how my mind worked. Why was I always at odds with myself? I'm sure many of you can imagine wanting to accomplish something great in your life, but something always pulled you back. Maybe it scared you. Maybe it stopped you. I didn't want to do that anymore. I had done that enough in my life. So I began to study how my mind worked. I studied all kinds of cool things. And I started to change. The course and the momentum and the direction of my life changed. And at first, I had a simple goal. I just wanted to go into public and not be noticed for being the fat guy. That was it. And I did that. And then I wanted more. And as my body changed and how I began to think would change, that little voice in my mind telling me to help people and make a difference in this world, it came back. It came back roaring and screaming at me, saying, this is your calling in life. This is what you need to do. And I remember I had a real estate career at that time. I chucked my real estate career, and I committed my life to helping other people helping them change, not just to lose weight, but to change their lives. The course and the path of my direction changed. 
And when I think about the journey of my life, I realize along that journey, I had three best friends that helped me on that journey. Without them, I wouldn't have survived. I had three best friends that carried me through this journey. They're still with me today. Those three best friends are patience, persistence, and faith. They carried me on my journey. Patience. However long your journey is going to take, that's how long it's going to take. And we do not live in a patient world right now, do we? Right? Social media, texting, we have Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and something else that will come out tomorrow. Everything is now, now, now. Well, you know what? The journey of your life may not happen now. Patience allows you to carry yourself forward on that journey for however long it's going to take. I'm 55 years old. I've been on this journey for a long time, and it's taken me many years to get where I am now. And it's continue, I'm going to continue to have to have patience to move me forward in the next part of my life. Persistence. Persistence on the journey of your life is critical. Why? Think about this. We all think that we're going to get from point A to point B in a straight line. It'd be really a great thing. I don't know anybody that's done that. The reality is there will be obstacles and challenges you face on the journey of your life that you need to face. They have the lessons you need to learn on that journey. 95% of the people fail at accomplishing their goals. You want to know why? It's not because they're not capable. It's because when they reach an obstacle or challenge in their life, what happens? They turn around and they run home. Persistence. There's a lesson to be learned from those obstacles and challenges you face. Push through it. You will get it. And I'm going to take this off of my shoe. Faith. You can't do any of this without faith. The momentum of your life moves forward with faith. Faith is, from getting from point A to point B, if you knew everything you needed to know to get to point B, you would have gotten there already. Faith is knowing that what you need to learn along this path, this journey of your life, you'll learn when you need to learn it. It'll come about at the right time, and you've got to have faith. Faith. And it's funny, as I think about my journey from all the TV I watched as a kid, kind of like Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz and the journey that she went on. Actually, the thing I liked best about Dorothy was her red shoes. But think about this. Here's this girl. She lives in this little town in Kansas. She hates where she lives. A house picks her up, throws her to some distant land, and then she figures out that she wants to go home, and she doesn't know how to do that. And along her journey, what did she find? Patience, persistence, and faith. You know them as the scarecrow, the tin man, and the cowardly lion. They helped her along her journey to find her way to get where she needed to go. And on that journey, towards the end of her journey, Right? She's in the Emerald City. She meets the wizard. Of course, the wizard's not really a wizard. It's just some guy. And at the end, the wizard's going to take her home in a balloon. And, of course, Toto jumps out of the balloon, and she runs after him, and he takes off, and he can't control the balloon. And now Dorothy's bawling her eyes out. She did a lot of that in that movie. She did a lot of complaining. She did a lot of crying. And she's sitting there crying, I'm never going to get home. I'm never going to get home. And then... What happened? You see Glenda in that big ball of bright white light come down from the sky, and she's got that big smile on her face. And Dorothy goes, what will I do now? What will I do now? And Glenda, with a big smile on her face, says, you've had the power all the time. And she goes, well, what do you mean? She goes, you've had the power all the time. And then she said something important to her. She said, Dorothy said to her, well, why didn't you tell me? And Glenda said to her, if I would have told you, you wouldn't have believed me anyway. So I'm telling you now. You have the power on the journey of your life. You have the power to accomplish anything you want. Patience, persistence, and faith. They're with you. You have them all right now. Maybe you know that you have them. 
Maybe you still need to discover them. They are with you. They will stay with you. They will serve you. They will love you. Take your scarecrow, your tin man, and your cowardly lion with you on the journey of your life. They will take care of you. Use them. They are your best friends. So I'll leave you with this. In the journey of your life, I challenge all of you when you leave here today to go inside of yourself, discover how truly amazing you really are, and then do this. Step out of the circle of what you've always known. Learn something new. All the speakers you have heard here today and will hear here today have stepped out of their circle. They have all done something different. That little flame inside of them, they've embraced it. And they've gone with it. And along that journey, take with you patience, persistence, and faith. Have a great day.